Yesterday's briefing was more like a spanking. First, after the press had spent weeks concocting a fantasy rift between Trump and Fauci, the doc showed up to end that dream. The first and only time that Dr. Birx and I went in and formally made a recommendation to the president to actually have a, quote, shutdown in the sense of not really shutdown, but to really have strong mitigation. We discussed it. Obviously, there would be concern by some that, in fact, that might have some negative consequences. Nonetheless, the president listened to the recommendation and went to the mitigation. So Trump took the experts' advice the moment it was offered. And how did the media respond? Did they think, oh, wow, we were wrong to waste America's time with stupid high school cafeteria gossip? No, they acted like a baby losing its favorite toy. Are you doing this voluntarily or did no, the president... No, I'm doing it. I, uh, everything I do is voluntarily, please. Don't even imply that. Hmm. It's finally happened. Even the calmest guy in the room hates the media as much as everyone else does. Note to media, when Fauci thinks you suck, that's a real diagnosis. Take two months off and don't call us in the morning. And after weeks of the media pretending they were on top of the virus while claiming Trump had blood on his hands, what did Trump do? When any old TV pro would do, he dropped a montage to show how wrong the media was. How worried should Americans be about coronavirus? Coronavirus is not going to cause a major issue in the United States. This team is on it. They've been responsive late at night, early in the morning, uh, and they've uh, thus far been doing everything that they can do, and I want to say thank you. Now, the montage was a media trick that only the media is allowed to pull. So you know it pissed them off. How dare he use their own words against them? Somehow, that's propaganda. In the briefing room on Twitter, their incontinent outrage spilled onto their screens. Check out these sweaty CNN headlines. You can almost see the steam coming out of Jeff Zucker's ears. And why? Because only the media has the power to destroy your reputation. But don't you dare turn the tables on them, which Trump did. Yesterday, Trump also mentioned that we have a lot of extra ventilators. Maybe we should drop them off for today's briefing. All right, we have a, uh, because montages are the media's bread and butter, we have a montage of the media responding to Trump's montage. Montage visa montage, let's roll. He started this briefing with that anti-media propaganda video, which is nothing short of disgraceful. Some kind of backward-looking, edited video propaganda. That was propaganda aired at taxpayer expense in the White House briefing room. This is a temperament issue where he's consumed with ego and insecurity. The president at times combative, angry. That is the biggest meltdown I have ever seen from a president of the United States uh, in my career. That is amazing. Dana, to see people in the media talk about ego makes me laugh hysterically at them. <laughs> David Gregory talking about ego and acting as though, how dare they use their own words? Those are their own words. It's not propaganda when it's their own words. Sorry. It's one of my very favorite things to do when I was a press secretary was basically just quote somebody's words back at them. And, and sometimes it was the media, but often it was um, um, whatever the opposition was saying at the time. And it's, it is really effective. I do love it that Dr. Fauci finally said, enough. Yeah. You know, he has been so accessible to all sorts of media, including um, all the major networks. But I think some of his most effective work has been that he's shown that he's been willing to do barstool sports and pardon my take. He's out there everywhere to try to spread a message. But the problem is, one, never answer a hypothetical. That you, mm -hmm. That's kind of like PR 101. Make sure you always tell your clients, never answer a hypothetical, because that's what Dr. Fauci did. You, hypotheticals are meant to sow division. And mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons you never answer them, because there's never actually a good answer, because you can't provide all the context. And they will cherry pick things to try to hurt you. So I'm glad that Dr. Fauci pushed back on, on that. And uh, I think we're all better off for it, because the more he's able and willing to go out there and talk to all of us, the better off we'll be. Dana, what if you answered a hypothetical? <laughs> that is a hypothetical, and I won't answer it. No! <laughs> See how that's done? Yes! <laughs> Try again. <laughs> oh, that's why you're the press secretary, and I'm just some schmuck in a sweater. All right, Juan, take it apart. Say how disgusting and unprofessional this was.
Well, I'm glad you said it. Uh, I, I think, you know, when you look at that, when you look at that video, he, he, he doesn't just take people's words. He actually omits words so that they say things that are favorable to him. And that's why people would say this is a distortion and a He disgrace. learned that from CNN. But to me, it, uh, well, I don't right? care who he, he learned, learned it from. CNN. He's the president. He's the president. He's our president, Greg. He, oh. should, he has information at a time. I mean, he's totally... He, I mean, the way that he put Fauci out there looked like Fauci was in a hostage video. You know, oh, we got to That's insulting this man's to Fauci. Ego, and beat up. No, you know, it's that's not. ridiculous. Well, you know, let me just say, I, today, today the president, hang on, guys. Today the president comes out with a tweet in which he's attacking the governors. Oh, I my mean, God. come on. He says the, he's like the Captain Bly on the mutiny on the bounty. He must, someone that's got to tell the president that the ca Captain Bly is a villain. That really? The crew, the crew is abused, and that's why they they rebel against him. And yet the president says, "Oh, he, you know, he's seen mutiny on the bounty, and tell the governors they owe the captain, and the captain has control." This is how I mean. Is he? It's like an alternate reality. What is this but, guy but, doing? J because but Jesse, he should be he should be saying that he's protecting the American people, yeah, not yes. about to abuse yes, us he has and been spark a rebellion that. of the governors. So Jesse, uh, oh yeah. again, and how no, about again? How about, Jesse, How give about, me a people wait, wait, upset about his tweets point, while he's running the country and doing a pretty good job. Go, let's get Jesse in and then the judge. But Greg, can I make one quick point on that? <laughs> oh my I, God! I just wanted to say no one. You know, <laughs> yeah, because you know <laughs> what? Like speaker's no. corner. You hear, on Hyde you Park. hear Republicans? Uh, no, no, no. No, you hear Republicans right block. now who are up in arms over the fact that he says he has total authority. Wait, that's and the, the next block, Juan. Because oh, you know what? That's like a king. All right, Jesse, the judge. Juan, take a lap. I would say this. I would say the president okay. really appreciates the power of the media, and he takes bad coverage very personally, and he's taken it upon himself to police the media, and the media is squealing like a bunch of stuck pigs because they've never been policed before. Remember, for years and years and years, it was only the media that had access to raw footage, could mm -hmm. edit tape, and could distribute it. Now, every American, including the president, has access to the same footage. So it's not propaganda when you show the media what they said. He just held a mirror up to the media and basically said, how dare you get it wrong and then come into a briefing room and right. wag your finger at me like that. And the point is this, there's just a right. wrestling match at this point between Trump and the press over this narrative. And the narrative they want to sell is Trump was late and wrong. And the president's saying, no, I wasn't, and pulls out Fauci. Fauci says, listen, every single time I made a scientific recommendation to the president, he took immediate action. That destroys the press narrative that said he was late and wrong. And anybody that ever now, from this day forward, comes up on this show and tells me the president was late and wrong, I'm pushing Fauci in their face, and yep. I'm going to do it with pleasure. All right, Judge, last word yeah. to you. Well, you I, could push Fauci, but you can't uh, push right, other people. All right, thank you. The, you know what, Juan? Juan, let me, tell, let me tell you this. There is nothing that is more important than the truth. The truth is that the, what was put up by the president is what they said, period, end of that story. Number no, two, not the true. reaction of Fauci, the react... Okay, let me finish, Juan. The reaction of Fauci when they tried to say to him, you're being forced to say this, yeah. was so shocking that everyone looked at it and said, this guy is serious. I mean, he's not making this stuff up. The yeah. president has been living for three years with, with networks, with CNN and MSNBC, who do nothing but call him names 24-7. He has a right at some point to defend himself and point to the fact that their propaganda is a lie. And the best way to do that is with their own words. Period. End of that story. You know, it's interesting. He's Thank basically you. shattered the media ceiling. It, like, it used to be the media can only manipulate the environment. He's saying, you know what? I'm going to take your words and do exactly back to you. It's new ground. You could argue, hey, it's, it's changing things for the better, for the worse. Who knows? But I loved it.